Hello everyone out there. Um, I felt such a strong conviction of the Spirit of God to make this a video and to share some things that um, maybe the wider Ecclesia have not heard but my inner circle have been hearing for um, just under one year. Um, I felt conv convicted of the Spirit of God to make this video because I listened to um, a video supposedly uh, coming from a prophet and um, I listened to it on a very respectable um, platform and when I listened to it I began to feel panicky and um, as I felt panicky I recognized that uh, feeling um, and I, I knew then that you know it was very critical and this message is really targeted at the Nigerian Ecclesia, the Nigerian Church and it's for the purpose of stewardship and it's also put for the purpose of the nation. Um, we are in a, a very critical um, time, very, very critical time, you know, Passover time and it, really it is very, uh, it is up to the church what happens in a nation. The church determines what happens in a nation. I'm going to be as transparent as possible so that I can communicate communicate this message you know with courage and also a deep sense of responsibility uh, obeying the Lord that those who uh, hear it may test it the Bible says we're to test every spirit uh, we're not supposed to be um, under the kind of um, what shall I say um, um, really it's near lawlessness as we are experiencing in the body of Christ you know um, so many, so much coming at us you know from um, prophets or not and uh, it's like take it or leave it and um, I think it's very very important that I do my part and I'm speaking not from the place of expertise or a place of even uh, a fivefold distinction I don't know I'm just speaking from the conviction of the of the of the of the spirit you know uh, putting out what I know uh, for someone to um, test and to to judge the Bible enjoins us to this is uh, in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19 you know um, Paul speaking to the church in Galatia do not quench the spirit so we don't quench the spirit he says uh, also verse 20 says do not despise prophecies one translation says don't hold prophecies in, con uh, in contempt but test all things hold fast what is good abstain from every form of evil test all things okay there should never be prophecy from any prophet that is not subjected to testing it's very important that we do that we can no longer be lazy about our stewardship now i'm very concerned concerning nigeria that in um, literally three days there's a there's a, a change of government okay and a change that as uh, the kind of change that we're going to be experiencing change of government is something that the ecclesia had to keep their eyes on so it is a change a shift that creates you know all kinds of openings okay and nature abhors you know vacuum so this is a time that even the demonic begin to seed all kinds of things because it's a new beginning and so we cannot be so distracted and have so much you know coming at us from in the church from the people who are supposedly prophets you know bringing so much disturbance to our spirit man that we're not even in a position to be able to design and be, to be able to carry out our work of stewardship that we're not able to 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 kind of monitor if you want to say but discern follow track the shift that is coming all right there comes a time where we've got to trust the lord with all of our hearts so i'm here to put out you know what god has been saying to me right so the lord spoke to me very clearly leading a, a, a prayer session that i've been leading for three years altar of fire you know the lord spoke to me to the ecclesia through me saying he says beware he says prophecy is going to be used to dis distract the nigerian church let me say that again would you believe god will say that he says be aware that prophecy 
is going to be used as a distraction to the church in Nigeria. What 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 was God saying that? God was saying that there is going to be a stirring up of people, even Balaam time, because Nigeria is likened to F, uh, to Pegamos in the book of Revelation. That is the the compromising church. So where there is compromise, it's very, very easy for this to happen. And the complaint of Jesus to the angel over the church of Pegamos included, you know, two things he hated. And they're very, very evident in the uh, church of uh, Nigeria. And when I say this, remember, there's an exception to every general rule we say in law. So, you know, to the angel over the church of Pegamos, Jesus was very clear about what he hated. And what is incredible about Jesus' message to those seven angels over the churches of um, Asia was in each district, Jesus came in a distinctive. What do I mean by that? Jesus came um, as a representation. He manifested the strengths of that area. He came in a distinctive, he came in an identity, he came in a role. And from Genesis to Revelation in the Old Testament, God would appear to the people in a distinctive. All right, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha. He did not appear as Nisi to sort out healing, Rapha to sort out healing. So we got to understand that generalization is not really, you know, God's pattern. The Bible tells us even regarding spiritual gifts that there are diversities, you know, but all the same spirit. So we've got to really recalibrate, come back, you know, to God, come back to the root of who we are, the root of our existence and the root of what we've got to carry on, which is the word of God. There should be no theology that is greater than, you know, the spirit's ability to bring us present truth to bring us understanding of the word that helps us you know steward the day steward the day we've got to understand that we are a called out people we have a commission mandate every believer has a mandate to fulfill every believer we've been you know so taught by Babylon that everybody is battling for their own vision, for their own dream, their own goal. And we're told we've got to do it that way. We have to be successful. And we've almost forgotten what it is like to be a disciple and who sent us and that we're on assignment and that we've got to make an account. We have been made to feel comfortable that we are dwellers on this earth. We're no longer, most of us, living like sojourners. We have not been moving with the currency of the fear of the Lord, the attribute that Jesus worked with, that one day we're going to stand before the Lord as Jesus did. He's our role model and he made an account for those God gave him. Not, You know, he never gave himself he didn't keep the 5,000 he fed them and dismissed them right so you have to be careful that one day and you don't know when you're gonna stand before God what are you going to make account for so God says that prophecy is going to be used to distract the Nigerian church knowing that this is a critical time one of the most critical times to the existence of the nation choices decisions are to be made by the ecclesia where the nation goes and we have been on a trajectory i would say from my own um uh, stewardship since 2014 when god sent a man of god chuck pierce to nigeria and he was being hosted by another man of god in my uh, 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 apostle emmanuel Nuhukure in abuja and a word of the lord came very powerful word of the lord um, showing that there was a, a sword over nigeria and the church had nine months to determine which way that sword went okay and he said nine months from that day it was August I think uh, 20 um, 2014 uh, that nine months from that day you know we were Nigerian church had to determine where this sword goes it, you know 
and exactly to um, the day that the man of God prophesied, you know, um, the current president, Mohamedou uh, Buhari, was, you know, inaugurated as the president. That's 2014. Now, we, another opportunity comes for another, you know, a democracy. This is 2019, I believe. And Job Pierce was back in Nigeria this time, you know, I was the host, you know, for the man of God to come again in Abuja, right? Because I thought that we had not stewarded properly the prophecy of 2014. So Chuck Pierce comes to Abuja in 2019, gives us another word again to do with nine months of plow, uh, seven months of plowing, nine months for the ecclesia, right? To look back and rejoice at what God's not. Prophecy is progressive and we're going to be able, part of our stewardship is striking. So the church of Pegam Jesus complained about two things doctrine of Nicolaitans hierarchical worship doctrine of Balaam Balaam the prophet who taught Israel to be misaligned right to disobey God and marry Moabite, um, Moabite wives Balaam the compromised prophet the prophet that was that could be bought whose heart could be bought and then who begins to, you know, who's bought to speak falsehood, right? But for the divine intervention. So we've got to know that God said prophecy will be used to distract the Nigerian church. So three days to the inauguration of a government and we're still being, you know, uh, spoken to by prophets who are not quite sure. It's a kind of guesswork. And what is prophecy? In the simplest definition, prophecy is the mind of God, the heart of God revealed to his people through but through the Holy Spirit communicated, you know, through man. Now, how can God have so many divergent, um, uh, um, divergent opinions, divergent uh, direction? So can you see what is happening? That apostles must arise and take their place and bring discipline and order to the lawlessness in the prophet realm absolute lawlessness so we're getting anxious we're getting fearful because it is in the spirit of god the testimony of jesus christ is a spirit of prophecy when prophecy in its most foundational in a, a level prophecy brings edification exhortation and comfort to all men but we're not being edified we're not being you know uh, built up and we're certainly not being comforted because of so many different you know voices so many different opinions not lining up now I believe very strongly that every ecclesia has to, every believer has to rise up from this day. There's three days, right? There was Jesus was in the tomb for three days. On the third day, there was resurrection, right? The, I mean, the case of Lazarus, okay? Jesus wasn't going to be moved out of position because he's the resurrection. The fourth day, stinking situation came to life, right? You know, it, it, um, you look at the uh, the the children of israel they prepared for three days to cross over the jordan to the promised land no now what i want to just suggest to everybody it is important that we understand that the way the church has to mature right now we've got to take authority over leviathan and all of its workings you know and we got to legislate against this balamic order that is bringing so much confusion weakening the people it's actually rooted in witchcraft which means crafting the future right so there is an attack on the church. The church is, an attack, is on attack from inside. And we've got to literally sanitize inside. And it is the work of the apostles to take the sword of the spirit, the sword of the apostle, and go to war against Balaam. You know, Jesus said to the compromising church, did I say that, you know, Nigeria is likened to to the Pegamos church, the compromising church. And this is no disrespect, right? Culture is a very big thing, a very big reason. Culture practices, custom traditions that have been inherited from generations of clergy is the is the problem here. But to that, you know, compromising church, you know, remember Jesus came in a manifest. He came to Pegamos as he who has a sharp 
two-edged sword. So this is a climate where the word of God should be important to the people. So where the word of God is not important to us, the enemy knows how to build this substitutionary system because he's a usurper. So the usurping spirit, which is the antichrist spirit really, usurps, you know, to usurp is to forcefully take another's position. So now forcefully taking another's position and bringing words that do not line up with God that has left, uh, you know, people confused, people, you know, uh, anxious and people fearful and people fighting one another created divisions. And this is working from supposedly the church. Can you see what I'm saying? Deuteronomy 29, 29, very clearly the word of God tells us that the secrets of the Lord, I mean, we have to, you don't need a prophet to tell you what is yours. You need the spirit of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse um, verse um, uh, 11 tells you that only man knows what the spirit of man is thinking. It says similarly, you know, the spirit of God it is who knows the things of the spirit. And verse 12 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 tells you that you have not inherited the spirit of this age, but the spirit who is from God that we may know the things that have been freely given to us. So you can't abdicate the things that have been freely given to you, to you, you know, and you can't know what's been freely given to you without the spirit of God. Now I'm going to be reading you from Deuteronomy 29, 29. Just work with me here. Now, hyper a hyper grace preacher will tell you Deuteronomy is gone. You don't read it. But not everything of the Old Testament has been done away with. You pull it through the cross. You know, there are messianic promises here. You pull that promise through the cross. It becomes a more heightened promise. It becomes your inheritance as new creation. There has to be uh, where are you coming from so the schools in Nigeria history taken away from from the curriculum so if history is taken away from a climate where you're stewarding hold on to the Pergamos type you know climate here if history is taken away you if people don't know where they're coming from they're not gonna know where they're going right if pension system is not in place they, the future is not secure so for every uh, born-again Christian every ecclesia listening to this right Right. your responsibility and you live in Nigeria so your responsibility you know part of your stewardship is to uh, call down the kingdom of God that is the standards of God that makes a society function the way it ought to function and its citizens are, are respected by the leadership the citizens become people who are beneficiaries of effective and efficient systems that work that the citizens are not murdered like chickens and we're getting all these different you know um, prophecies for such a delicate thing concerning who leads a nation and there are 30 different opinions and that is being said to be the mind of God there needs to be a rise and there needs to be a, right, a, a righteous indignation from the church because this is a mockery of who our God is our God cannot have different different opinions different voices it cannot be a case of any minimum anymore there has to be the apostles you know have to rise up and in their function bring other sanitization to this whole prophet realm right so here the secret things belong to the Lord our God but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever forever that we may do all the words of this law the secret things belong to God the things are revealed the will of God is revealed 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 it tells you that they killed Jesus because they never knew that he was the king of glory. The mystery of, of his will has been revealed to us for your glory. So no one should really come to prophesy to you about the will of God. As a Christian, as a born again Christian, you have access to the will of God. You've got to mature out of this so that these Balaamic altars can be silenced and shut down in the nation. This is why the nation is intoxicated with China. I'm sorry I've got to take a rest because originality calls to originality deep calls unto deep but any climate where the church is not stewarding as it should steward is going to invite you know the mystery of lawlessness and 2 Thessalonians
Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 says it's already at play. Did you hear that? Mystery of lawlessness. The word mystery in the Greek mysterium means something that was previously hidden but now revealed. You need to understand that the revealed things belong to you as a believer but to those who don't know the Lord it remains a mystery, right? So we are living carelessly and really, you know, trafficking the mysteries of God which we should be custodians of and then the things that are revealed to us we're allowing Balaamic altars Balaamic priesthoods to begin to speak so much confusion witchcraft means crafting the future so there is literal you know paralysis you know in the church you know because we literally like you know the, the cripple at the gate beautiful begging when there's been an outpouring the will of God has has been revealed to every born again Christian. You carry, you have the ability to know the will of God. No prophet should be uh, prophesying to you the will of God. You ought to know the will of God for your life. You need to get your Bible. You need to read your Bible. So Deuteronomy 29, 29 tells you that, right? That the secret things belong to God. This is a year of unraveling. This is a year of kings. The emergence of the church as a king. The emergence of a church as an apostle church. Never mind individual apostles but the entire church of nigeria this is a year assigned by god that it rises as an apostle church because nigeria is an apostle nation so that it begins to bring the government of god down to the earth and begins to sit as a as as a, a, a governing church and begins to bring order and every other gift begins to regulate and begins to do what it ought to do this is the year of government right it's a year of kingdom versus kingdom contentions is a year that the government of God is to sit through the church that people understand what government is all about what governance is all about what administration is all about what realms are all about this is a year of receiving language with which to unlock the future can you see how delicate it is Nigeria is a prototype nation is a nation called to build prototypes that's another 2023 word prophecy that I received so in a year, prototype is a first of its kind. Remember, Mosturia mystery is something that was previously hidden, but now revealed as you were transitioned from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. There is something you benefited from there. You became a custodian of God's mysteries, no longer hidden. What was hidden when you were in the kingdom of darkness before you became born again is now revealed to you. You can't sit there and have just everybody just speak confusion and and you forward it as WhatsApp. That has to stop, right? So this is what I'm doing here. You know, I feel so convinced, uh, convicted of the Lord, you know, because I was so disturbed in my spirit, you know, and almost having a panicky attack because that's what happens when, you know, familiar spirits, that's what happens when divination is, divination is in, is in operation. You become anxious, right? That is the opposite of what 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 tells you that he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation and comfort to all men. That's foundational level prophecy, right? And verse 1 of 1 Corinthians 14 says, pursue love. So you're not going to be able to prophesy redemptively if you are not grown in the fruit of love, right? The fruit of the Spirit, nine fruit of the Spirit that is in the in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 of it there, without the character of God, you know, we have lots of people speaking even out of anger out of emotion out of their own and that has to stop there are three days to get to a place that god has determined we've got to come in that proverbs 3 5 you know dimension of trust the lord with all of your heart do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways not some of your ways acknowledge him right we've got to do that so you come to proverbs um chapter 25 like i said that's another another key word for 22 23. It's very important that we understand who we are because every one of us, I pray that when you hear this message, you're going to come into this assignment to stop Balaamic altars. Those Balaamic voices have to stop speaking so that we can hear the voice of God.
It's on. It's given to the church to do that. Unless we come into that governance, unless we use the keys of the kingdom of heaven. When Jesus says, I will build my church, I'll build my ecclesia, I'll build my ambassadors, right? I will build my legislative assembly. The Passion Translation of the Bible translates church in Matthew 16, 18 as God's legislative assembly. So I'll build my legislative assembly. I'll build my lawmakers, you know, and my lawmakers, whatever law they pass over the land is as it's going to be. So God promises to build, you know, um, build uh, according to your decrees. So you're not going to be able to decree the mind of God. Remember, prophecy is the mind of God revealed by the Holy Spirit through man. So you're not going to be able to build if you're anxious, if there are so many versions of what, you know, God is supposed to be saying. And that is not God. We need to, you know, legislate against that confusion because the army is not going to be able to get the nation to her promised land if she doesn't have direction. Prophecy brings direction. That's one of the functions of prophecy, right? So it says it is the glory of God, Proverbs chapter uh, 25 verse 2 it is the glory of God to conceal a matter remember uh, Deuteronomy 29 29 but the glory of kings is to search out a matter you're a king the Bible tells us that we're kings and priests unto God right so it is your glory this year the kingship the kingly dimension of who you are is really emerging this year if you're an ecclesia in Nigeria remember it's a year of you know unveiling of a, 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 a people of God's you know calendar of God's schedule you know of the kind of church that God is looking for a governing territorial church Ramasukata so it is that yeah it is the glory of God to conceal a matter it is but your glory is to search out a matter so it's a time of unraveling and it is the role of apostles to sit and, and, and unravel the wisdom of God that you know is being brought by the prophet so it's a year for convergence of the apostle and the prophet to bring you know a bit of order so I am calling on apostles you know in Nigeria to please 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 rise up and, and come in your function so that there can be sanitization and that the people of God are not anxious and people are, are able to see what the days that are ahead we need to understand that leadership is very important another word that God has um, given to me is that esteem glory is going to be the weapon of the ecclesia for this year because we are in a Passover year and even a Passover decade God you know began to show me this so the spirit Spirit of death has passed us over. Everything that you know was in the biblical, you know, uh, Passover. Jesus came and, and, and fulfilled the Passover rite that we become beneficiaries of Passover. So now, if someone said to you, "Don't read the Old Testament," now you're not even going to know that that happened. So there is so much confusion that literally Nigeria needs apostles to rise up, you know, so so fast. As you hear this, and you're an apostle of, you know, repeat you repeat because God says there is premium in you know in experience all of a sudden you know so many people apostles apostles but do you bear the mark of apostleship so we're in exciting times um, um, people of God where you know the, there has to be a proving right because the priesthood the royal priesthood you know of God the Bible says in Romans in 1 Peter 2 to 9 the calling of that royal priesthood what is that that you may proclaim the praises so proclaimers have to emerge this year right from the house of God proclaim the praises of he who called you out of darkness into marvelous light that is the essence of priesthood to be proclaimers right so we, we, we link that as well, you know, to like Proverbs 29, 29, 25 Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says to everything there is a season, a time for every work on the purpose he makes all things beautiful in its time this is the time for the Apostle Church to arise out of Nigeria the endless expectation of all creation has been waiting for the emergence of the Apostle Church what does the Apostle Church look like what nation has been given the mandate, what nation has been given the mantle, what nation has been dressed up, what nation has been pre-appointed to produce a prototype of Apostle Church. I want to just put it out there to somebody that it is Nigeria. So the contention is that this prototype church does not em emerge, right? So the prophet has been prophesying, but now there is mixture. There is confusion coming from that realm, right? And many are moving by word of knowledge and that we're thinking is prophet. So right now, our literal deliverance is going to come from apostles who take their place. The Bible says one in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 28 first apostle that is 
carries a wisdom seat. The apostle carries the wisdom of God. Beyond building, the apostle brings order. So that we need to literally in the next three days call forth that apostle. Paul the apostle said to the saints in Rome, he said, I long to see you that I may, you know, I may impart to you some spiritual gift that you may be established. There is an establishing that has to come. The body of Christ, we have to come in an established heart. We cannot fear who's going to be president, who's not going to be president. We have to come out of that realm. This is the dispensation of the fullness of the times. And what happens in a dispensation like this? 1 Corinthians, 1, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10 tells you what happens we need to understand the times interpret the times then know what to do we are in the day of the lord and in the day of the lord you know there is the day of the lord is a partial consummation of the dispensation of the fullness of times and what is so exciting about a time such as this is what happens heaven and earth come into alignment this picture is in 1 john chapter 5 you know and you see that in verse 8 and 9 heaven and earth the three that bear witness in heaven agree the three that bear witness on the earth agree so there is a line that is you know you know literally a road that is going off so it's important that everybody at the sound of my voice begins to understand that we need not fear we God, everything is under God's control God is in charge we are living in a, a, a time that is predetermined pre-appointed everything that can be happening to you God already knows you know so it is important that we come into that place of maturity this this is the, 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 the day, the decade of the revealing of the mature church, right? And out of Nigeria, prototypes to come. Like John 10, you know, John ch chapter 10 and verse 4 and John chapter 10 and verse 27 paint you a picture that you should be very very comfortable with jesus says that my that his sheep know him right he said my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me so you got to begin to follow the voice of, of of jesus and i mean the voice of jesus through man we've got to believe that we know the will of god you have to know the voice of god you have to know what what voice to follow you have to be able to discern anything that brings you disturbance right we have to go back to the word of god we have to test every spirit would you believe you cannot be anxious about who's going to be president who's not going to be president we're going to be have to be anxious about the will of god we have to be anxious about being anchored in the will of god because the bible makes it very clear and i read this for you why you have to you know come off this canal plane and we have to move up to the point of governance where we can be able to stop the real enemy Who, what's who's the real enemy here right the bible says let every soul be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from god there is no authority except from god and the authorities authorities that exist are appointed by god i mean as painful as it is this is the word of god romans 13 1 and romans 11 and, and verse 33 and 34 tell you you can't advise god right it says let every soul be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from god and the authorities that existed are appointed by god right so we need to come into the peace of that scripture and from the place of that peace we co-labor with god co-create with god and we're asking god in your revealed will where is the nation who is to be leading now the lord said to me esteem is the weapon of the ecclesia for the sierra the decade right he it says it's a passover year passover decade he says esteem is also our outer garment right so the glory of god as much as you respect yourself the honor with which you respect yourself give to yourself is going to be the honor is that determines who leads you so if you do not esteem yourself you are going to have just bad leaders so can't we kind of backtrack and align with god trust god we are his sheep we hear his his voice and we follow he said in john 10 11 i am the good shepherd the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep i am the good shepherd the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep please 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 we apostles must rise up 
and help to sanitize the spiritual climate in the matter of hours, there needs to be a stillness so that we know he's God. There needs to be a trust level boosted in the church. We cannot follow the voice of Balaam and become so fearful. Right there in the message Jesus gave to the angel over Pegamos, the church of Pegamos, he says to him who overcomes, right? So there are promises for those who overcome, who don't become subject to what God hates. He made it there. Remember, he came as a, a two double-edged sword, as, as the word. And Pegamos is a place, it says, where Satan's throne dwells. So you're going to have attacks like Satan himself is doing it. He says wherever his servant Antipas was martyred. So you're going to have a lot of sins of the tongue. The tongue is going to be used to distract, to divert all of that. So I have come to speak from a place of conviction, not expertise, just to put it out there. The urgency of the spirit I feel today, feel even making this message is out of my comfort zone, but I feel so convicted in my service to the Lord, to the people of God to speak this way that there needs to be a judging of the mystery of lawlessness and there needs to be a silencing of the altars of Balaam. There, there needs to be a rising of apostles in their function. You know, they are there. Patriarchs, matriarchs, apostles need to rise up in their function and take position and begin to shut down these altars in the next three days. It's a crossover time. It's a Passover time uh, for the nation. A new Nigeria is already there. We can't be confused about whether it's there or not where is it what is it what does it look like the will of god has been revealed to us we have to you know um, move and distribute the sight that we know the will of god every child of god has the ability capability to receive the will of god and so we no longer should be disturbed by anybody bearing the name prophet the role of the fivefold prophet is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry to teach people how to use the gift of prophecy already inside of them the role of the prophet is not to prophesy confusion to a climate to the degree where people are anxious and fearful and not able to make decisions and choices. This is very important that we understand that. The fivefold function of a prophet is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, please. And for the saints, you need to understand that who you are in Christ cannot be robbed off of you. You need to come in the confidence that you're his sheep, you hear his voice, you know that he knows you, you follow him, right? The greatest poverty is poverty of sight, not believing in what Jesus died to give you. I hope this blesses somebody, and I hope that we're going to have lots more people calm, lots, lots more people trusting the Lord, lots, lots more people understanding that there is no government that God does not know about. So whatever this is, we take authority over confusion, we take authority over Belamic thrones and altars operating against the ecclesia of Nigeria, against the nation we decree and declare a sanitization a change of spiritual order we decree and declare a change of spiritual climate and an atmosphere we call down the peace of god jesus said lo i am with you till the end of ages may you receive that assurance that he is with you till the end of ages no matter what no matter what is in place he is with us to the end of ages that we can start to re release worship altars all over the nation worship altars all over the nation because we are inviting the throne of god into our nation please may the lord bless you and thank you very much for listening to this uh, very brief you know sharing that i feel very convicted to share out there god bless you and please be assured that God is in control. He rules in the affairs of men. Don't fear. Don't be anxious for anything. God bless you.